In today's video, I'm gonna show how I had to fix a K-Blade shear while on the road. Um, most people aren't as familiar with the K-Blade shears as uh, they used to be. They're not made as much anymore. Uh, they're designed in part for slide cutting and also for other, other uh, cutting applications as well. On this particular design, there were two different angles that were cut onto the shear and uh, one of the blades was sharpened improperly, so I had to correct that. So I'll take you through that as we go through the video, but before we do that, we have a co-sponsorship for this video. Uh, the first sponsor is the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. Uh, it's an excellent tool and resource for people that are looking to get into the sharpening business or if you're in the sharpening business now and looking to collaborate with people that are in the same mindset, it's an excellent tool as well. I'll leave a couple of links down below. Uh, one to the actual guild itself and then the other I will leave a link for uh, the gentleman who runs it, his name is Matt, uh, to his YouTube channel, which I think you'll find helpful um, as well. And then of course, uh, our other sponsor is Above Shears. Uh, Above Shears supplies some of the best beauty shears to the industry and grooming shears to the industry. It's a line that I sell, and it's also a, a line that I rep for where I, where I sell to sharpeners as well. So if either stylists or groomers or uh, sharpeners are interested in taking a look at these shears, I'm happy to help them. Uh, there's some information that I'll have below, but one of the reasons I wanted to also call them out in this video is because they actually have a slide cutting shear that's designed specifically for doing slide cutting. It's called the D-Blade shear, and here's a picture of it so that you can see what it looks like. This is probably one of the best slide cutting shears on the market, and if you have customers that do a lot of slide cutting, or if you're a stylist that does a lot of slide cutting, this is a shear that you might be interested in. So anyway, I'll leave contact information about that below as well, uh, as well as a link to the above site. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. There'll be information on how to do that below as well. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what I had to do to correct the shear that I ran into while out on the road. All right, so I had an interesting shear actually pop up uh, today while on one of my routes. I'm doing a little bit of corrective sharpening today. Uh, in an area that I have not broken into before. This is the first time that I've really been in this area. And um, I had a, an old style, what would be called K-blade type of shear that was handed to me. Uh, the way that this shear actually operates is you have a larger blade that's thicker along with a smaller, thinner blade um, that works together for number one for slide cutting it also lends in actually uh, reducing the push even though it's actually a slide cutting shear and you can see on the inside of the shear that it's actually a double hollow ground shear um, very similar to a, um, a thinning shear so you've got a, a hollow grind in this area and a hollow grinder along the rest of this blade and the reason that they have to double hollow grind a blade like this is because this part of the blade has been cut down into so deep in order to be able to get the ride line that's necessary to go up to the tip um, they have to go ahead and double hollow grind the shear. Same thing like you would do with the thinning shear because you have a, the shorter blade that needs to be below the tops of the teeth on the tooth blade. But what I found with this blade was the blade was way off as far as the angle was concerned and that's not coming through very well. So let's switch over to the magnifier. All right, so just to show you what I'm running up against, I'm actually trying to sharpen this shear right now at about 50 degrees and you can see that I've started the process of creating a double angle um, on, up, up above, the, unlike where you can see this angle right here is the angle that I started sharpening and at 55 degrees it only came down to about this point, hasn't even gotten anywhere near the edge yet. So in order to be able to bring this in and completely re-round out this front surface, I'm gonna have to switch to a heavier grit on my machine. This is an 80 micron. I'm gonna go from an 80 to a 60 to a 30 to a 15 at least, and then possibly a nine in order to be able to correct this issue. But I wanted you to, sh I wanted to show you the steps that I would go through to do this. I'm not gonna show you the entire time, just for the sake of the time of the video, uh, because it's gonna take a little bit of work to get all of this backside meat of the front surface of this shear blended in and down to the edge since this was so heavily ground at such a steep angle. So even though this is 55, this was probably unfortunately last time sharpened at about 40 degrees, which for a slide cutting shear is not gonna allow the shear to 
slide properly. The other blade can be done probably at about 40 degrees and that would be fine. 45 degrees would probably be fine, but this blade, which is gonna be the blade that's gonna do the majority of the slide cut, um, really does need to be at a much steeper angle than that. So we're gonna rectify that situation. All right, so the machine that I'm working on today is actually the Kotoku Red Duo Head. Um, and this machine is just absolutely outstanding. Um, I have been very impressed with the way that this breaks. I mean, even up at full speed, if I lock this down, you can see how quick this comes to a stop. Uh, overall, this machine is dynamite, plus it's a double-headed machine as well, which is nice. Um, I have not put a mister on this yet because I've been testing it in the van, and we'll go ahead and actually put the mister on. I wanted to see what it was like without the mister, which will actually uh, put some uh, moisture over the top of the plate to cut down on dust and to cool the blade as I work. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually just bringing up my first burr or at least getting close to that edge and dealing mainly with the convex surface on the front side of this thicker blade. I had to take off a lot of that metal like we had discussed in the first part of this video. In order to be able to do that quickly, I wanna be able to keep working this until I bring that up. So I'm gonna keep doing that until this comes up. Okay, so what I've done here is I stop for just a moment and you can actually see how I've started rounding that front surface down. Now I've actually gotten to the edge right here on the shear. This was gouged into by the previous sharpener. So I may not correct that all the way back to the early entry of the shear because it doesn't need to be corrected all the way back and I'm just taking off more metal um, than I need to, but they don't cut in that area of the shear. Uh, typically. So now what I need to do is just continue on until I actually get all the way to the edge. Um, I did bring up a little bit of a burr here, but I'm actually trying to stay just ever so slightly proud of the edge on this. And then when I switch to the 60 or and the 30, I'll bring it the rest of the way in because the grit, uh, the uh, burr off of the 80 grit pad is actually pretty coarse. So if I can avoid doing that, I will. Um, it's still just a little bit humpy up in this area as well. So I'll probably draw the backside of this angle up the face of the shear just a little bit more to help with the blend when I actually do the reconvexing on this blade. All right, so I continued on through the work on this shear and you can actually see how I knocked back more of the back side of this. There's, it's very, uh, there's not any kind of a hump on the back side of that angle. You can also see that I've gotten very close to the edge, although I have only brought up a burr in this area right here and not the rest of the blade. I'm gonna bring that the rest of the way in with a 60. Unfortunately, um, I got a little too overexcited and you can see that I came up the face of the shear just a little bit more. Now you don't wanna go over the top um, of the backside of the spine, obviously. But the reason that I say unfortunately is I really only wanted to bring it up to about right here with this coarser 80 grit pad because anytime that you go beyond what you need to do in order to be able to start the process of blending into the front surface, with the heavier scratches, you just end up creating more work for yourself at the end of the process. So I'm gonna to have to work a little bit harder to make sure that all of those scratches are gone when I do the polishing on this. But, you know, again, um, on a, a more advanced repair like this, these types of things happen. Um, so that just means I just have to do more work with the 60 up in this area, then with the 30, then with the 15, and then the nine. So I'm gonna go through the remainder of the process and reconvex this down to the edge, bring up my burrs, and I'll show you the result of that after I'm done. All right, so you can see the result of the work that I did with the 60 micron after the 80 here. I have actually gotten all the way to the edge on the shear. Let's see if we can pick up a few of these um, burrs that are on here. There you go. You can see a little bit of the burr that's on the edge right here. Uh, this has been brought up all the way along the edge itself. Now, what I wanna do with this, so there we go, we can pull that up and then bring that back down. What I'm gonna wanna do is I'm actually gonna wanna work this on the water stone here. Uh, before I do any more work on the shear. This is called layer tracking. What I wanna do is I actually wanna make sure that as much as, as, as possible, I wanna pull all of the, um, the, the, the burrs away from the edge on this shear and make sure that I actually have um, as much of that burr off so I can create a whole new burr with my 30 micron and then I can move on to the 15 and then the nine if I decide that I need to go down to a nine to be able to get my polish in properly like I would like to. Um, I just did some flip-flopping of the burr 
you can see that I don't have much of a ride line in the early entry anymore because of the amount of work that I needed to do. This shear has been rounded over a little bit too much on the tip, but we'll deal with that after the shear is back together by just taking the tips back ever so slightly and evening all of that out. But I need to go ahead and make sure that I bring up at least a reasonable amount of ride line in the early entry of the shear on this. This is a 5,000 grit stone that I'm using. I'm gonna go back and forth. So I know that the burrs are pulled up and away. You'll see that when I started, I actually pulled back towards myself as I started to pull the burrs away and then went to work on recreating that ride line again. I did establish a ride line on this before I started the process, but had to do so much sharpening because of damage, it took me a little bit to get past it. So let's take a look at that ride line again. Let's see if we got it a little bit better. Let's get into the magnifier here. All right, we're getting there. It's almost there. You can also see from the past person that improper work was done on the inside again as well. And I'm trying to correct that. I don't know how well you can see it on the video, but my my ride line stops just proud of that tip right there where somebody put too much pressure back on the spine. I'm at another time, but I'm going to keep working this until I bring that ride line in. All right, so I just finished the process of bringing up the remainder of that ride line. Ride line is not perfect, but there is a ride line now that goes all the way down across the early entry up into the top of the ride area and then back around. So again, um, sometimes you have to shoot for perfection in this industry and then settle for excellence, right? Um, we're going to do the best that we can with a shear that's had some pretty severe damage done to it. All right, so I did uh, go down to a 15 micron, so you can already see that we're ending up with a much better looking convex now on the front surface of this shear. Let's go ahead and turn this in the light so you can see that this has been fully corrected. The ride line, I did end up having to go back uh, to the water stone again here, uh, just to go ahead and reestablish the ride line one more time after the 15. Got a little bit heavier scratches right here. We're gonna see if we can polish those out. Again, if there's a little bit of scratching left over after dealing with a shear like this, uh, the customer is usually always understanding, especially after you build some trust. Uh, this is a, the second time I've been to this customer, and this is a new set of shears. They gave me another run of shears that had all been sharpened incorrectly the first time that I was here. So trust has already been established. But even if there's a little bit of scratches on the surface after doing this level of a cut on the shear, um, understand that people don't expect perfection, um, but they do want a good quality product when everything is done. So uh, hopefully this is going to please the customer when we're done. So we're going to go through the polishing process now. All right, and on the polishing process on this machine, I use a felt pad with a three micron diamond paste. And I'm gonna start the process by making sure that I have good burr removal. I'm not putting pressure on the edge. I'm just making sure that the burrs are all pulled forward. And I'll start the process of polishing the front surface so that I can get rid of the scratches. And what I'm gonna do, and sorry for all the flashing here with the light and such, if that's coming through on the video, um, I'm going to do a series of what I call cross hatchings, where I'm going up and down with the convex as I go back and forth, and then a regular convex. That way I'm actually disturbing the scratch pattern a little bit better that's been created and helps with being able to polish off all the scratches on the front surface. I'll show you the result in just a minute. Alright, so here is the end result of the shear being polished and reconvexed. So you can actually see that I have a fully reconvexed shear again, all the way down to the edge. A uh, little bit off right here in the throat. This was done with hook and loop. So if you ever told that you can't do something with hook and loop, that's not necessarily true. It's just knowing how to do it and not get that swoopy kind of a cut um, into the throat of the shear. And you'll see here that um, we've got a full convexed edge all the way back down to the edge. Let's get those fingerprints off of there. There's probably still a little bit of scratch right in this area. I don't know how that's gonna come through on the video, but yep, there it is, just ever so slightly right in this area. But that's gonna be acceptable. I did have to do some additional work, like I said, I would probably have to do in this area to be able to polish that up. So all in all, this year is definitely ready to go back to the customer. Um, we're gonna go ahead and finish up uh, the other blade. And uh, that's not gonna take nearly as long because that one, uh, was not really sharpened as incorrectly. Um, if I can show you uh, the cut 
and uh, what I have here, you can see it wasn't polished very well. You can see it's a little bit rough. Um, more than likely it was done uh, on a flat hone, it looks like, because it is rounded on that front surface, but you can see the roughness of the edge. But the angle is not as far off on this one as the other one was, and I think it's probably because the, the um, previous sharpener didn't realize and maybe possibly um, scratch test this blade and just assume that the other blade should be at the same angle. Where in this case, on this particular type of shear, it's, it's really actually two different angles that should be on the blade. Uh, this is a good example of one, the Via, I believe it's um, slip, is another one that would have two different angles on it, um, which is why you kind of have to assess your blades before you do work. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the process basically similar to what I did, just without as many steps and without as coarse grits at the beginning on this blade. And then once I have this back together, um, I'll show you how I'm gonna handle the tips and then I'll show you how the cut test turns out. All right, so the share is back together and it's gonna be ready to go back to the customer in just a second here, but you can see what I mean by the rounding of the tips uh, right here, in particular on this blade. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this down, take a little bit of that pointy edge off of the other, and then just kind of smooth these tips out just a little bit. The way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna do it over here on the head of the machine. So start this up. Always make sure when you're doing your work, you're protecting your hands. Gonna go ahead and flatten that down. I'm gonna take a look at what I've done. Bear with me for just a second here. All right, that gets rid of the rounded portion. I'm gonna go ahead and round out the back side of this larger portion of the blade. Bring it around. I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side. Bring it around smooth that out and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and chamfer the outside corners of what I just created just to smooth that out because that can be a very hard corner on the shear after you squared some of the shear off so this is going to smooth out the surface Let's get that a little bit more even there we go and then back around and then back around and what you want to be careful of is that you're not hitting the other tips as you do this. Just go ahead and drop this back into place so you can see in the magnifier what I've done and why I've done it. There we go. And you can see that I've evened those tips up now so they look a whole lot better. All right, and we'll do a quick test cut. All right, so first test cut is gonna be on tissue. And the trick is, is you have to make sure when you're testing these things that you actually cut where there's blade. Um, I know if that sounds stupid, but you can see this actually opens up to where you can make an improper cut. Um, on the shear. So we're going to go ahead and do a cut right from that early entry of the shear right there. You want to make sure that you get in there and start that cut and then run that through. Let's go ahead and get up here so we can do a good cut. There we go. And then you can see we've got a nice smooth cut all the way up to the tip. I'm going to go ahead and test that wet as well on the tissue and then we're going to go ahead and do a test on here. All right, so I did my initial test on the wet as well and we're going to go ahead and do a test on here. And you can see that we've got a nice clean cut all the way up to the tip on this, even through a little bit of mat in that hair that's there. Again, all the way up, smooth. Um, and then ultimately what I'm gonna do too, because a lot of these are used uh, for slide cutting, is I'm actually gonna go in um, with one of my mannequin heads that I have here, bring this back to the customer and let them do a quick test for the slide on this as well. Um, only because I wanna make sure that the customer is completely happy with the way that the shear is actually supposed to function. You know, the difficulty with these types of shears, again, is that you you typically, because of the difference, when you open these things up, the customer just has to understand where they can and cannot cut on this shear. Oops, sorry, that one blurry. It actually has to be closed to about this point before it's gonna start doing any cut. But the majority of the time when they're using the shear, they're actually using it where they're actually doing a slide cut across the hair. So the shear is gonna be closed about this much as they do the pull through on the cut. So it's a very specialized shear. Um, it's just not one that you run into much in the field, but I wanted to show how to do the correction on this. You can see that convex is a whole lot better than it was on that front surface when we started. And uh, hopefully this helped. All right, well, I hope that that helped. Uh, it's actually was a fairly simple uh, repair the issue was is it just took a lot of time because I had to deal with the front surface of the shear that had been sharpened so incorrectly but 
uh, that does happen when you're out in the field and uh, it's usually something that can be fixed. So hopefully again, this was a help to you. Uh, all the equipment that you saw in the video, I sell the majority of it. If you wanted to give me a ring or shoot me a text or an email, contact information about that is below. And I also do do training for sharpeners as well. So if you have any questions about that, be sure to reach out to me. Again, I hope these videos are helpful to you and thanks so much. Happy New Year to you and we're looking forward to 2023.